We are at John One, and this is a 23-year-old restaurant. They were so successful that they decided to do a standalone Panchan store and a production facility. It's very small, and it's where everything can be crafted for both the restaurant and for grab and go. We're gonna meet with Mrs. Jun, who founded the restaurant and also the Panchan store, and we are gonna sit down and make some Panchan from scratch, which is super exciting. This Panchan store, she opened in 2008 to basically support the restaurant and also so people can come in and grab this stuff, take it home, and have an amazing meal. So she's from the region of Chungcheong Namdong, and this, the town she's actually from is from Seosan, and she learned to make Panchan from her mother. These are the roasted anchovies that we're gonna use. What's cool about these anchovies? So the, the, actually the heads have been removed and the guts have been taken out because the guts have kind of a bitter flavor. It's all by feel here. <laughs> smells so good. I mean, that like caramelization of that chili paste sauce. It's done. It's got a good balance of heat, that chili spice is there. Sweetness, kind of like a caramelly sweetness to round it out. But we're gonna make this little thing called a, a tonggurang thing with ground beef. They're like little rounds, they're like little meat rounds. Hundred and fifty tonggurang things will be coming out of this thing right here. <laughs> There's a certain rolling technique that takes decades to master. I'm not doing it. Come you go. Pegindo, you go choy. Many joy. <laughs> because it's delicious. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> you know, growing up for me, these things were like after school, like, oh, I'm hungry, mom, I need food. My mom would sometimes make these, but it's honestly easier to just go to a panchan store like this, pick up a couple that are already fried up and ready to go. You know, you have a ready made meal. This is, this is the perfect Korean after-school snack. This is how she's gonna prep the kimchi right now. It's sort of like a rice powder. So in a way, she's kind of making a roux here, right? She's taking flour, water, anchovy broth, thickening it now. This is partially why uh, kimchi is not vegan. When you cook the anchovy broths, you're developing the flavor, but when you add the rice flour, it gives it kind of that richness, the, the depth, and it kind of softens the kimchi. Oh man, that smells super strong. It's been sitting in a salt solution, basically brining for about six hours, which is kind of on the shorter side, but because it's baby Napa cabbage, you can do that. So she's doing a double wash to make sure that she's kind of rinsing off all that salt from before. That's how you start making kimchi. Wow. <laughs> What's immediately gratifying is how crunchy it is and how fresh. I mean, this stuff really hasn't fermented, so it's unfermented. The cabbage is very, it's still raw and, and just kind of aching to develop, 
but it's still tasty. What's not obvious is that the underlying flavor is the anchovy and the shrimp paste. That gives it a very pleasant, flavorful finish. Korean, mm. Korean <laughs> the reason why Korean food is so unique is because of Panchan. It's such an important foundation of the cuisine. You know, with literally like 12 things already on the table, you haven't even got your entrees yet. Your palate's just getting excited and you're ready to have a great meal. just wonderfully fermented. Not overly so. Good and balanced with the right acidity and spice. Mm. That's really tasty. It's not superly meaty. It's got a lightness to it. I'm gonna try some of this uh, anchovy. It's almost like the uh, outside has been crystallized. Mm. These things are really nice. They're a little chewier. They're not quite as crispy but that sweet, spicy glaze on the outside gives it a nice, extra deliciousness. Thanks so much for watching, and if you wanna see more of my K-Town adventures in Los Angeles, click right here.